Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Corsair K100 RGB. This is a flagship device that sits above the K95 Platinum, a solid favourite of mine, and a keyboard with a hefty price tag, but some really nice design features and facets. And I'm going to be talking you through all the various things that I like about this keyboard, the updates and upgrades they've made to it, and the things that make it worth the money. I'm also going to be showing off the IQ software and demonstrating what goes on in there, as well as demonstrating these new OPX optical mechanical switches from Corsair that are fascinating and are part of the upgrade. I will also be comparing this keyboard with the K95 Platinum XT in a separate video, so be sure to check out the links to that and subscribe if you're not already to see more. Now, as I said, this is a premium gaming keyboard from Corsair, an expensive one, but as you can see already, it has a really striking design to it that includes that solid brushed aluminium backplate, a really hefty, heavy, solid built design, and some really nice features to it. Now, the K95 Platinum was a favorite of mine for quite a while, and then I upgraded to the XT, which had some slight changes to it, but the K100 has some significant changes to it, some minor, such as you'll note a slight change to the Corsair logo, for example, on the wrist rest. You'll notice this padded leatherette wrist rest, which is magnetic, and that clips on with magnets. You'll also see it has that dual USB connectivity, same as the K95, and that's because there's a USB pass-through port at the rear. So one of these is for the pass-through, and one is for the keyboard itself, and that obviously powers the keyboard and the RGB lighting and everything else. The keyboard itself also has a number of changes. As it already says, it has these new OPX optical mechanical key switches. They are faster actuating than other key switches you're used to. They're guaranteed to up to 100 million key presses, which is about 100 million more than most traditional key switches and they have a smooth linear travel with just one mil of actuation and they're four times faster than standard keys. That's Corsair's bold claim there. And I'll leave all the specifications in the description, but as I said, one millimeter actuation, 45 grams of actuation force, 3.2 millimeters total travel, which basically means they react to the softest press and they react fast and quick, but they're also robust. They're designed to be solid. Other things you'll note are double shot PBT keycaps, the multimedia volume wheel and controls on the right hand side on the top. And on the left top is another wheel that I'll talk to you about in a minute. Now up close, you can see the padded wrist rest, probably more comfortable than any of the other wrist rests on the previous. K95 for example, that was mostly just a rubber affair. This has a lot more padding to it and a new updated Corsair snazzy logo with the yellow marker on it, which is similar to what I saw on the 4000D airflow case that I've unboxed and reviewed recently as well. Each bit of this keyboard oozes a really nice build quality and design to it and it should because you're paying a lot of money for this it has a very hefty price tag depending on where you are in the world it's around 229 dollars i believe and whatever that equates to in your country that is a lot of money however you are paying for a premium keyboard with some really nice changes to it simple little things for example it's now possible to adjust the rgb lighting patterns and schemes with simple key presses on the keyboard there's a function button you can then press one two three four five six seven eight nine and change the lighting on it on the fly without having to go into the iq software that's one little thing and i'll talk to you about a lot more as i go through another change that they've made is you see the textured wasd keys or and q w e r a s d and f those were obviously present on the K95 Platinum, but have now changed slightly in the style. You also notice the macro keys on the left, G1 to G6. On the left hand side, they've also changed, and I'll show you a close up of those in a minute. The design of these are obviously very different from the original ones, which you can see here on the right. It's worth noting those ones on the right hand side, the WASD key there, you can see they're quite worn out. That's from heavy use over the last couple of years and they've not stood up to the test of time terribly well. The new keys, for the most part on the majority of the keyboard, are PBT double shots, so they're more robust and resilient. 
Not too sure about the textured ones, whether they are, but they do look like they're a better build quality than the traditional older ones, and they certainly have a new design style to them, as you can see. Quite nice, and this is one of the highlights I've always liked about the high-end Corsair keyboards, is these textured WASD keys. Essentially, they have a slight angle to them on the edges, in the direction that's logical for where your fingers will be sitting. For example, the W key has a tilt at the top, so the standard one is kind of flat like a normal key would be, but the W version that fits in with the texture has a little edge at the top of it. So when you put your hand on the keyboard, if you're gaming at night, you can basically feel what keys your fingers are on without having to look and you're not likely to put your fingers in the wrong place because you can identify easily where they are and not just because of the texture difference but because of the shape as well and that's something I've always really liked about these keys it also means that that section of the keyboard kind of stands out and you'll see that a bit more in a minute close up you can see the PBT double shot which means they have a sort of rougher looking texture to them but they still let through a decent amount of light bleed from the RGB lighting but that means that they're more robust and resilient and they'll last a bit longer over time. Now I'm going to do a separate video demonstrating the key press sound so if you want to hear what the keyboard sounds like to use check out the description for a link where I'll just be typing and showing you what that's like. But one thing I've noticed is that the OPX Optical Mechanical key switches are still fairly noisy with these PBT double shot keycaps on top of them. Quite loud. Now the K95 Platinum XT that I came from had blue switches on it by choice because you can choose between different ones. The K100 has these new key switches on it but I did find that there's not that much audible difference between the two as in it's still quite loud. They do have a smooth action to them and as I said they respond really quickly and only require a light touch. Another highlight to these keys is they are programmable on an individual basis in terms of RGB lighting, so it's a key by key illumination. But you can also program macros to each of the keys as well and set up key changes. I'll show you that a bit later on in the software. Another thing is that you can also layer the lighting and you can have up to 200 onboard profiles and then 20 lighting layers so you can create layers on top of layers and create a really custom looking RGB lighting effect which is pretty nifty. As I said another highlight to the design is this wheel at the top which is essentially a multi-function control wheel that allows you to do various different clever things and I'll show you that a bit later on but one of the solid favorites of mine has always been the media controls on the right hand side with the volume control and just simple media playback buttons it's really nice to have easy access to that this padded wrist rest is also easy to detach on previous keyboards you had to clip it in place with some flimsy kind of clips and there was a serious danger that they might snap if you weren't careful this one's held on with magnets and basically just clips into place really easily and comes off again when you want it to. Underneath you'll see there are some cable management channeling areas so you can run a mouse cable or a headset cable for example through there and then there's a USB pass-through port at the rear that I'll show you in a minute. This is a very familiar design to the K95 Platinum takes a lot of what already existed and was already fantastic on that keyboard and then it simply adds to it. As I said you've got this solid aluminium black anodized brush finish on the chassis. A very heavy hefty keyboard. It's not a lightweight one and that's nice I feel like you're getting what you're paying for here. One thing I'm not too much of a fan of though is this new G key set up with the shiny silver ones. I prefer the blue option on the K95 Platinum XT, I thought it looked really nice, but that's a personal preference thing. One thing you'll note is the K100 logo in the bottom corner there, and you can see just that style that comes across. Other buttons you'll notice is a profile switching button, and you also have the ability to disable Windows key, and this control wheel allows you to do various different things, and I'm going to show you in a second what you can go into and adjust. But again, it's a textured wheel and it's basically a multi-function. 
As a basic level, you can use it to adjust the lighting. So you can just roll it back and forth and turn the RGB lighting up and down on the fly without having to go into the IQ software. As I said, it's also possible to adjust the RGB lighting and change between the various different schemes without going into the software too. Click on the function key down the bottom and then on one of the number keys and that will go between the different lighting effect modes, which is pretty neat. It's nice to have that easy access and 200 different profiles are possible so you can save a multitude of profiles and that's obviously with custom macro settings rgb lighting effects and all sorts so there's a lot more programmability in this and it has a lot more memory to it it has eight megabytes of onboard storage and thanks to hyper processing technology allows you to have things like a 4000 hertz polling rate which is four times faster than most other gaming keyboards and basically allows you to do all sorts of fast and wonderful things with this one. Now what I want to show you is a quick close up to the IQ software for the dial control. I'll show you a bit more on the IQ software and everything else a bit later on. But as you can see you have multiple options here. Pressing in the button in the middle allows you to switch between these various modes. You can see if you have it set to white you can adjust the brightness of the RGB lighting by just dialing the wheel back and forth. That allows for simple and easy adjustment of the RGB lighting on the fly, which is something I really like because it's not terribly easy to do on the previous keyboards without going into IQ software or going between profiles. Track jogging isn't what you think, it isn't skipping back and forth between music, but it's actually rewinding within the track, just moving back a little bit. There's actions playback, which is a custom thing where you can create your own actions within the action section, and that includes macros, or launch programs and things like that, any sort of buttons, and I'll show you those a bit later on. Then you have switch applications, which is basically an alternative to alt tapping. So you roll the wheel and you can roll quickly between these different things. There's another one for vertical scrolling. And as I said, you can basically just click the button in the middle and then get between these different modes. And then you can use the wheel to then do the different things. So just to show you the vertical scrolling, obviously this is the same as basically rolling your mouse wheel, but you can go up and down quickly with this control on the keyboard. Makes for a nice alternative if you want to do something where you don't want to, where you're using your mouse to do one thing and the wheel to do another. You can do vertical scrolling, you can do horizontal scrolling, you can zoom in and out as well. Obviously this isn't just within a web browser, it will be within any action within Windows. And you can customize these settings too. You can set up and add your own. So there's plenty of different flexibility options within that software. And you can just see just how much potential there is here and all the different things that you can do with it. Those G keys are obviously programmable and usable within Elgato Stream Deck software as well, just like they were on the K95 Platinum XT. And you can program custom macros of your own as well and set up buttons on there too. USB pass-through port at the rear, which is 2.0 type A USB pass-through. And then that multimedia volume wheel, which has a smooth action to it and a really nice design. A slightly different design to the previous one. It looks nice, it's got that nice texture. You'll notice there's a similar sort of texture on all these things on the volume wheel, on that dial on the left hand side, on the textured WASD keys and things as well. It all has a very similar sort of setup in terms of the design aesthetic. Now, a close up look at those optical mechanical key switches. As I said, these are designed to react more quickly than your traditional key switches and the result is that you can basically activate them with a very light touch, but they've still got a good travel distance. So if you like to push the keys down a lot more when you're using them, then you can do that too. There is quite a lot of noise from them. Though. As I said, this is not a quiet keyboard by any means. It does give a very satisfying high quality sound when you're typing on it. If you want to check that video out and get an idea of what that sounds like without me talking over the top, then I'll link to that in the description. But here you can see what they stand out like. Now these are obviously the switches to go for because they are superior. Those are Corsairs specially designed for this keyboard, high-end key switches, brand new. And they use a beam of infrared light to detect the keystrokes. And this similar technology has been used elsewhere. Razer has a key switch like this, for example. And it is thought of to be like the premium high-end of it because it, you're using that laser beam and the light basically to track 
infrared light to track the key movement instead of your traditional way of doing it makes it a lot more accurate. Obviously these key switches also last a lot longer at 150 million key press guarantee as well. On the underside of the keyboard you have a couple of feet for adjusting the height. However it is quite a chunky keyboard anyway. To be honest I don't really use these feet. It sits on the desk and you've got a good angle to it anyway. It's a nice comfortable keyboard to use but you can raise it up if you want to. And just to demonstrate what that looks like I have it set here a little bit higher and then you can drop it down. Now one thing the keen eyed viewer might spot and you'll see a bit more now is there is also a 44 LED edge lit RGB lighting section around the outside. It's a 44 zone light edge. It basically runs from the sides all the way around the back. The previous K95 Platinum had an RGB lighting bar that went across the rear but now it's split into 44 zones and there is a lot of lighting here and you'll see this a bit more in the software a bit later on but one of the things I like about it is that it's not pointing out to the sides as you can see it's kind of pointing downwards so you have it glowing nicely on the desk so you have this sort of underglow to it that beams out from the sides and it's not obnoxious it's done in a really nice way it basically leads to a lot of light bleed on your desk from the sides of it and obviously it's customizable across the keyboard as well because it's in 44 different zones just there but then you also have all the individual keys that you can be programmed and you can see the wheel at the top that can be adjusted that's lighting as well and then you have the Corsair logo the media keys and all sorts of other things basic out of the box action on the key lighting here too as I'm saying you just press those function buttons and you can adjust between it without even going into the software so you can immediately do it and you can see me doing it here just pressing a function key and one of those buttons gets it running so for example pressing function and one gives you spiral rainbow function and two rain function and three rainbow wave and visor type lighting type lighting ripple color shift color pulse color wave and static and then you can cycle between the colors by just pressing function and zero and that also go between them you can also reduce the effect of the speed with function and minus or increase it with function and plus rotate it left and right to and do other things like that so you can basically change between those on the fly and that's really nice to have that easy access there which isn't something you can do before now another change that they've made to the k100 over the k95 platinum is that the bottom row is now standard now as an experiment i did a stop motion video where i basically used the white pbt double shot keycaps from the previous k95 platinum and tried to install them on the K100. What you will see is that it isn't possible because the spacebar is a different size and so is the Windows key and the function buttons and alt buttons. They're slightly different and very small difference but enough that they basically squash up or leave a gap between them. So I ended up using bits of that original kit alongside some HyperX pudding keycaps that I also happen to have. Now what it does mean though is that you can buy your own kits of keycaps and customise it to your own preference and make it look the way you want it. You have to make sure you've got the right kit of course and it's going to vary depending on your US layout or whichever layout for your region. For example the HyperX pudding keycap set I bought doesn't have the large enter key so it actually won't fill this keyboard. But it's worth bearing in mind because it means if you have the original Corsair PBT double shot keycap set you won't be able to install it however with the white keys it looks incredible the lighting is even better and it looks really nice like this I think personally Corsair say they aren't sure whether they're going to do or when they're going to release a keycap set so we don't have any information on when that's coming I really hope they do it because I lo really love the original one the white keycaps that take up most of this keyboard here and you see in the view are actually from my original K95 Platinum I purchased the white PBT double shot keycaps and they've just lasted and that shows how long because it's been quite a few years since I purchased that but I used them on that keyboard and then I used them on the XT and now I'm using them on the K100 for the most part so you can still fit most of the keys on there it's just the bottom row that doesn't work anymore now diving into the software now diving into the IQ software you can immediately see the RGB lighting you can see the 44 zone edge lighting around the outside as well as all the other things that you can customize in terms of lighting and I'll go into that in a bit more depth in a minute first thing I want to show was the actions 
So you can set up macros and you can launch applications and you can do all sorts of things from in here. All the sort of stuff you'll be familiar with if you've seen Corsair software in the past. But what I like about it is that you don't have to use the G keys. So for an example here, I'm just programming it to launch Microsoft Edge and Firefox just for the giggles. By pressing one on the keyboard, I can then basically launch those applications. You can also do other things like record macros and set that to any key as well. So again, it doesn't need to be the macro keys on the left hand side, but you can do it. So here I'm just typing out some text, making a hash of typing because I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to present this video. But basically you can do that and then you can get it to happen on any key press. And that's a really nice thing you can do. What you'll notice here is there's delays in the macro recording as well as some mistakes. And you can go back through and you can edit what's in the macro individually with each of those steps and change them. And you can basically delete out the pauses so it ends up typing a lot faster or doing whatever you want to do, whether that's in the game or whatever else. Or you can basically go and delete the entire thing and then click that delays button and remove the delays from it so it immediately goes into the next action if you want to carry out a really fast macro. But the point here isn't necessarily the macro recording, the point is that you can assign it to any of the keys. Being able to assign it to whatever key you want obviously makes it a lot more customizable for yourself and you can really set that apart. As I said also, as I'll show you in a minute, the RGB lighting is on a per key basis as well so you can set that too so you can really customize this keyboard to your personal preference and those g keys on the left hand side can be set up to be used with stream deck as well so you can have stream deck actions from there without actually having to purchase a stream deck you can use that in the software basically get those to activate things when you're streaming the other thing to bear in mind is that when you create an action within this section it adds it to the library of things and you can then use that in the wheel so in that dial control as i showed you earlier on you can basically then set things up in there so you can create your own custom actions and then you can use it so that when you dial one way it does one thing and when you dial it the other way it does another so there's plenty of potential options in here whether that's some sort of macro or whether you're setting it to launch an application or doing whatever else another simple example is basically disabling the caps lock key i don't use caps lock and i hate it when i accidentally press it when i'm in windows for example i'm just typing on a daily basis I don't want caps lock to be used but then when I'm going into game I might want to do that and then you can switch between into a different profile and have that working again. With your eight onboard memories you also have that hardware lighting so you can set it and adjust the lighting specifically for the hardware so it's on board and you don't need to worry about having IQ open in order to have the lighting profiles that you want. Now an important point of note that I made earlier on is that this keyboard goes up to a 4000 hertz in terms of polling rate and that's something that's four times as high as what other Corset peripherals have been in the past but you do need to activate it within the device settings you'll note as default it's 1000 hertz and one millisecond and the polling rate on this one is 4000 hertz so if you go into settings and you can adjust it to 4000 hertz and that's 0.25 milliseconds which basically means you're getting the most out of this keyboard which is designed to be fast reacting and nimble now when you go into the lighting effects as i said earlier you can also bear in mind when you start doing this that you can layer them and i'm going to show you that layering as i go through here but you can see the standard effects for example rainbow wave that i've got going here basically goes to side to side and you just got rgb colors but you'll notice all the different areas that you can customize you not only have the lighting edge zones and all the keys but you also have things like the corsair logo at the top the mute button that Next to the volume controls multimedia keys can be adjusted and you can choose between different ones you can also do this on a key by key basis so you could for example just select WASD and have that as a different color so it stands out even more you've got the textured keys with the new F, so maybe have it in a different color entirely and basically to layer the lighting effects you're looking to set different lighting effects on top of each other and I've seen a similar lighting previously on the Steel Series Apex Pro and of course there's RGB lighting is definitely getting better and better and it looks really good it looks fantastic on this keyboard because of that RGB light bleed from the sides and the rear 
and the keycaps let through a decent amount of light and if you upgrade to pudding keycaps for example you get even more superb lighting out of it. These lighting effects, the standard predefined ones are available with the function key presses as I showed earlier on but being able to customise it in the software means you can do a lot more potentially and tweak things about a bit more. Simple things and you can see the difference what I was talking about here as well. That control bot button in the bottom left is the HyperX pudding keycap. You can see the difference between that and the other Corsair PBT double shot keycaps and see how much extra light it lets through. So being able to customize the keys and get your own setup is a brilliant way to change the look and feel of the keyboard and improve it even more. I really like how these white keys set off against the black back plate and make the design stand out even more. But the RGB lighting, as you can see here, and it's very hard to do RGB lighting justice in videos, but you can see what difference that makes and how good a quality it is as well. You'll note there's a lot of light coming through the keycaps themselves through lettering and it looks great even with those darker textured keys in the center. You have various different reactive lighting effects too where you can press and have lights burst out from the center or from the keys that you've pressed. A lot of these are familiar across a lot of other keyboards too but the fact that you can now layer 20 different effects on top of each other is really nice so you could basically set a base color so you could have a solid color as an example across the bottom and then put another color on top of that for set keys and then put a different effect colors on top of that and then layer them on top of each other and the end result is something pretty special so now I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of that. So we've got the white colour as my background. I basically filled the entire thing here with white. And now I'm going through and I made all the edges blue. And now I'm pressing control and clicking on the individual keys. And I've made WASD blue as well. You'll note now I've got Spiral Rainbow on top. It basically eliminates all of that. But you can then change that. And now I have type lighting set up. And that's going across the whole keyboard. So no matter what you've done, even it, whether it's the white keys or the ones that I've assigned to blue, now when I type on top of that, that changes color and responds to the way I'm doing it. And you can have different effects and different colors going through it. And you could set up different colors for each key and you can layer different effects on top of each other. And the end result is a really good looking keyboard. So there you have it, you can see just how many different features there are to this keyboard and what a wonderful bit of kit it is. Hope you found this video useful, be sure to check out the description for the links and all the information you need to know. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.